Um, with, without further ado, uh, I want to welcome our, our first guest to the stage. Uh, Ju and I actually connected a couple years back, and it was at this other event, and he was talking about how he literally purchased a, a one-way flight <laughs> out to Portland from Chicago. I'll let him tell the rest of that story, but just that tells you enough about Ju and his hustle. Please join me in welcoming Julian Gaines to the stage. How are you? I'm doing all right, man. How you doing tonight? I'm well, man. Thanks for having me. Man, it's, you know, I, it's been one of those interviews that I've been looking forward to for a while. And, you know, I think we had talked about that a little bit, you know, back and forth. But I'm, I'm glad you're here. I know there's a, a ton of things happening in the world tonight. I'm glad you're here with us right now. No doubt, no doubt. Thank you. And thanks for everybody coming out. Appreciate y'all. This is dope. Um, so I, I wanted to start off talking a little bit about um, where you're from, because you grew up in Chicago, right? Right. <laughs> yes. I, I think we got some other folks there, too. Yeah, we got Chicago in the house. Hey. <laughs> hey, shout out. Y'all make some noise if y'all here. Y'all, hey. <laughs> East side. <laughs> um. Tell me, tell me a little bit about growing up there. What was that experience like for you? Um, Chicago was um, uh, a well-rounded situation as far as living. Mm. Um, I got to experience, you know, a balance of being in the city and spending um, a lot of the formulating years of, like, teenage years in a very mixed very um, lucky high school. You know, my high school. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, you, we, you had, so I went to Homewood Flossmore High School. Okay. And so that's where I graduated from. One of the very good basketball program, very good football program um, in Chicago. If you live in certain districts, you have to pay different taxes. So you, but that ultimately goes to the school. So really, my, my high school, like so many, like Juice World is a, Oh, went to my high school. Um, wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. So a number of people come out of our high school that are really talented. And I think it's just straight, directly um, connected, connected to the the tangibles that we were like, yeah. you know, um, shown. Right. Absolutely. What you know, we get a lot of different narratives about Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, there's not as much of a spotlight on the the great things in Chicago. You hear a lot about violence. Did you experience a lot of that stuff growing up? Or for you, you kind of were in a different environment and you didn't feel like that was like, that wasn't something that felt normal to you? No, no. Violence is very much normal in the city. So like, although, you know, my mom and my step pops worked hard so that we could graduate from a good high school, mm -hmm. you know, um, Chicago land is just Chicago land. So mm -hmm. like, I've had friends get shot in the mm -hmm. suburbs. I had friends get shot in the city. You know, I lost my first friend at 12 years old. Wow. You know, and so things like that, they really shape you. Um, like, I, I, I tattoo. I, ta I have a list of, of dead homies that I tattooed on myself just as, like, a constant reminder. And so you don't really escape it. Like, when you come up in a certain environment, um, just moving around, and um, your parents will try to do the best they can, but... You know, you're going to make friends where you're going to make friends. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Now, tell me a little bit about your, your creative side. Like, have you always felt like that's where you have naturally leaned? Have you always kind of identified that way? And, like, how was that kind of as you were growing up? You know, growing up, I always felt like I was only good at a few things, hmm. like reading, creating, and, like, playing sports. Yeah. And so, initially, I wanted to be a professional athlete. Okay. Um, but I'm... You know, growing up in the shy, just with the parents I had and the family I had, it's like, don't put all your eggs in one basket, mm. right? So naturally, I had to find a, figure out, like, okay, what's my fallback, right? So I'm like, all right, if I'm not a professional athlete, and I was realistic, I'm like, I'm good, but I'm not that good, right? So I was like, <laughs> all right, so what else can I be a star in? Yeah. And like, you know, a professional reader doesn't really <laughs> exist. That's not... <laughs> you know? So I was like, dang, like, I just, I had a prayer and I was like, Lord, if you had, you know, if I can't be a pro athlete, help me become a professional artist. And hmm. so, and that, that was really just the, the mindset that I just set out on. Wow. It's, it's interesting that you were actually able to determine that at, at such a young age, right? Because a lot of times everyone's not that self-aware. 
Like right. sometimes you go through life and you go through all these phases and you're like, just to get to a point where you're like, I guess that's not what I'm, I'm meant to do. But, you know, in fact, when you went to school, you, you were in college and like you did play, you played football. Right, right. I went to Northern Michigan University. That's where I graduated from. I went there on a, a partial scholarship. Mm-hmm. So I, that taught me a lot about hard work and persistence. And I think a lot of the work and just things that I've channeled as an artist, it stems from me being a student athlete. Hmm. What a, so when you were in school, you decided to focus on like purely like you were like, I'm going to be an artist and I'm going to make it as an artist. Oh, I started. I decided that in high school. Oh, <laughs> like I designed the high school senior T-shirts like I like no anybody that graduated from me that knew me like this is not a surprise. Like I've said, all this, this was going to happen. Gonna go. Like I told them this. It just seemed like, oh, far fetched. Yeah, because that probably wasn't their experience. Right. It wasn't maybe their environment of seeing people that look like you become an artist. Yeah. Like every, even when I told my mom, like I want to become a famous artist, she was like, yeah, sure. I think you're a great artist. Uh, just, just get a minor in coaching. At least you can be a coach. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you're right. So I have a minor in coaching just because I listen. I think that's really the, a lot of my success is because I never think that my OGs are just talking just to hear yeah. themselves talk. Yeah. Like I listen. Hmm. So when they give me game, I was just, I was never that like bratty kid. I was like, yo, it when, when it's shy, like it's an honor, it's a privilege to have oh, big homies. Like, that's kind of lost this day and age, but, like, it's an honor to have, like, somebody that's, like, yo, gonna put their arm around you, yeah. yo, do this, don't do that. And, like, you know, that's I just that's just how it is, you know? I mean, I think it's a, if you can have that in life, it's great, right? Because mm-hmm. it's already hard enough kind of navigating things at times, but to have someone or have a group of people that actually kind of care about you and where you right. want to go, that's a whole different thing. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, after school, you would end up working in Chicago at um, a Jordan brand store, Station 23. Yeah. So I graduated in uh, 2015. I flew back to Chicago. And so my great grandmother bought a building in South Shore that I was born in. Mm-hmm. I spent the uh, beginning of my life there before my mom's like, yo, you're not going to South Shore High School. And if you were from Chicago, you know South Shore High School. <laughs> we're the South Shore. But my mom was just like, yeah, that's not happening. Yeah. You know? And so she was like, all right. Um, I'm, my grandmother bought this building many moons ago. She she was illiterate. She never finished sixth grade. But oh, she wow. had this uh, vision to mm-hmm. own property. And that building put my mom, her, her two sisters, and... Um, a number of other, like, see, they put them through college, but it even, like, sustained, like, it's, 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 it's really still in the family. So I refused to move back to my mom's house um, after college, and so I started off on the block, mm-hmm. on Yates, um, mm-hmm. in my grandmother's building in the garden apartment. Mm-hmm. So the garden apartment is underneath. Okay. And for me, that was really um, inspiring because I saw my situation as, like, a seed. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, I'm starting under the ground, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'm going to paint my way out of this. Huh. And so you're you're there, you're in that environment, and then what's the what's the way out, right? So you're at you're yeah, you're so working at station. station 23, yeah. Yeah, so I get to station, and I'm working as a brand ambassador, and so I, a brand ambassador is like a glorified intern, hmm. and and while there's like <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, you I get think paid. everybody probably been there. That's why they laughing. <laughs> They're like, we yeah, been you there. gotta pay your dues, you know. <laughs> And so um, I really now you don't mind being an intern as long as you're working for you're 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 elevating a brand you really love and that was Absolutely. Nike and Jordan brand to me yeah like it wasn't a job it was like I'm working with a brand that I grew up you like it it inspired me yeah. you know MJ is my favorite athlete it, <laughs> it doesn't matter what sport he don't even play football he's my favorite football player. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So for me, it was like, I f- like when my mom was like, she told me, if you get a job doing your passion, you don't really work. Mm. And so I got one of my, my good friends, Nigel, was working as a manager. He was like, yo, I really want to get you a job working with the creative team at this agency, but I don't know if I can set that up. So I'll, I'm going to get you a job over here. And 
I started with Optimist Agency and I worked as a brand ambassador. And so we did a lot of um, manual labor. <laughs> um, this is kind of, I wasn't an influencer mm -hmm. at the time. So I was doing things like writing influencers' names on shoes that we had to put on the side for them. And so you're just like packing on the side like yeah, seeing kids. Yeah, I'm right. like, man, how am I going to get $200 to buy these? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or like, oh, I won't even get these at Wait, all. Wait, you weren't getting a discount? Yeah, 200 Yeah, it still was 200 You know what I'm saying? It's like a soft <laughs> discount. You know what I'm saying? If that. And so um, from there, like, you know, we take take down equipment and whatnot. And I really got, that was my first exposure to Nike. Mm. Like in Chicago, a lot of people, a lot of kids don't know how Nikes are made. Yeah. They don't know a Past floor retail, game. right? You don't know past it being on the wall. Some kids think Nike's made at Foot Locker. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's I know, real. and I didn't laugh because I actually, I understand it. That's real. Like, yeah, that's real. I don't know many kids that grew up with me that ever thought that working at Nike was a real thing. Mm. Like that wasn't a, that wasn't my dream. Like mm -hmm. I want, I was like, yo, I gotta get to the league to make enough money so that I could buy all the paint and blick. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's the only way I'm gonna be able to fund my art, <laughs> my art passion. You know, if I become Ernie Barnes, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but when I worked that station, um, I really got exposed to the corporate side and Nike, and I was like, man. Those they look like me. They dress like me. They mm. they they are as articulate as I am. I was mm -hmm. like, oh okay, I'm not gonna be a brand ambassador much longer. <laughs> and so um, I just I'm very intentional. Yeah. Um, a lot of people move like feathers. I'm a much more of like a dart, you mm. know. And so you got something in sight. Yeah, I mean, cause listen, even if you a dart, right? Let's say you plan darts and you miss the target and like you break a window. At least people like, damn, he went hard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As opposed to a feather, you're just like, just floating around, just, <laughs> just land, however. That's, I love that analogy. <laughs> Tell me about you. When did you start like leaning into kind of customizing some of the things that were available to you, right? Because there were, there were canvases available to you in different forms while you were working at Station 23, what was the, the inspiration to actually start creating you know, with those in mind? So without actually getting this job title, I made myself the creative director of Station 23. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. I just took on the mindset. Yeah. Like, I'm not putting on no more. I don't get dressed to sweat, <laughs> you know? So I wasn't getting dressed and then going to work, putting on mm -hmm. workout attire to help. Like, my thing is this. I stay in my lane. Yeah. Yes, I have a degree in coaching, but I'm not a coach, right? Mm -hmm. Let the guys that want to be trainers train the, the athletes or whatnot. I'm a creative. Let me creatively, mm -hmm. right? And so my instance of me testing out if I had any kind of creative influence, right? And this is all internal. Like, I'm not talking to nobody about this. This, <laughs> this is, is all like, happening It's here. all in my mind. In here. Yeah. It's like, um, so they had these, these lockers. So as a brand ambassador for the space, I had to prepare the lockers for, like, Amari Bailey, Chase wow. Adams. Wow. Um, a lot of the, the top high school players in the shot. Mm -hmm. And then, like, any, I remember Mace came in there. That was mind-blowing. Um, I had to prepare a locker for Mace. You know, so I'm like, this is crazy. Um, and so it was things like that, like very uh, a plethora of um, experiences that I was like, okay, this space takes on a different entity or like an energy when, mm -hmm. when people come in here. Right. This is just work for me, but to them, this is it's a whole it's like experience. the club, but right. they get to work right. out. Right. right. So I would watch. After setting the lockers up, they had a dry erase board, and I have good penmanship. So I would write their names, people's names, really nicely, mm -hmm. right? And I would sit back and watch, and people would be like, they would Instagram this moment. And I was like, wow, this just went from them going and working out to a, a celebration of a moment that's ultimately elevating the brand. All I care about is elevating the brand. Wow. You hmm. know what I'm saying? So yeah. this is working. This is helping Jordan brand. Helping this Jordan. is helping Absolutely. Nike. Absolutely. Okay, this is making this space look better. Okay, this is what my ideas can do. And so I told like all my like people I was working with, I'm like, look, if I'm at work, 
don't touch them, don't write names. Because <laughs> I have I, the best hand. This yeah. is what I'm going to do, okay? Yeah. And so I did that, and that was my initial, like, seeing of, like, how just me putting a little idea going, like, or, or a little intention could change, like, an experience for people. Hmm. And so in, in that, you would, you would start to meet a couple of different people. And I think one of the things that ended up happening was, like, I think for your birthday or something, you got like a, a, a ticket to Complex Con or something like oh, that? Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, this was, that was, uh, so I turned 25 years old. Uh, my mom and my grandparents were going to buy me an Apple Watch. Mm. And um, I really wanted the Apple Watch at the time. <laughs> and, um, but my homie, had, he, he had sent me this plugger about Complex Con. I think this was 2016. And this kid, Cuddy, was just coming out of rehab. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to ever see Cuddy live again. Like, I'd never been to L.A. as an adult. I was like, I was like, Mom, don't buy me the ticket to, don't buy me the, don't buy me the, the, uh, the Apple Watch. Watch. Buy me a ticket to Complex Con. Hmm. And buy me the VIP ticket so that I could have access. But prior to that, a situation happened that really just, like, led me to, to, to suggest that situation. And Tiana Taylor had come into Station 23. Station 23, okay. And so at the time, I was painting on bombers. Like, Rothko had these bombers mm. with the reverse, you know, the orange on the inside. And I was, like, hand-painting on them with Sharpies and, like, you know, acrylic markers or whatnot. And Tiana came in, and she saw my jacket. She was like, yo, I like your jacket. And I was like, oh, I can make you one just like it. Wow. Like, I'm on the block. I'm hungry. So I'm like, yo, yeah. I need to, any situation, I'm about to paint my way. I, I'm about to get mm -hmm. off of the you, block. You saw it as like, you know, this is my, my this way is closer. This is my way. Mm -hmm. This is my mixtape, kind of. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so she was like, yeah, everybody says that. And I'm like, I'm not everybody. All I need is 30 minutes. You were going to customize a blazer in 30, I mean, a, a bomber jacket, in 30 the jacket. minutes? And so I was like... She was like, yeah. I was like, what size do you want? And she was like, I want that size. I'm like, all right, bet. So I was like, at that point, I'm like, I'm just going to give her my jacket. Like, who cares? <laughs> Literally give her your jacket off your it back. <laughs> and it was winter in Chicago. I walked down, down State Street with no jacket. But it was all well. <laughs> Tiana Taylor walked out with a jacket. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So um, I, I did some designs for her. I gave her the jacket. But that was very inspiring for me. And so... I remember posting, I only had like maybe like a handful of followers, but one of my big homies is Ben Edger. He created Box Water. Mm -hmm. And so I remember him DMing me. He said, yo, Jew, make another jacket. And so I always say like, if you keep friends around you that are better than you, you don't really, you shouldn't have to question them when they give you advice. Right, because they should have been there If you there question your friends, it's kind of like a disservice to your homies, you know? Hmm. Hmm. You should probably get better friends. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And so my man was like, yo, make another jacket. So I went home. I made another jacket. Fast forward. I turn 25. Okay. I say, mom, buy me this ticket to Complex Con. I'm going to go to Complex Con and be my own billboard. I was like, if Tiana Taylor likes my jacket, I know a brand Somebody is going to like my jacket. Like okay. And so I flew to Complex Con. And um, I walked around Complex Con to no avail. I like stood in front of like Rothko's booth. Hmm. Like, post it up. They didn't even pay attention to me. And then um, my homegirl I was with, she was hungry. Like, people that know me, it's like, I've been doing a lot of, I do a lot of intermittent fasting. Like, I don't do much eating. Mm -hmm. You know, eating makes me tired. So I'd rather not be tired. I just want to work, right? So <laughs> she's like, so I'm like, I'm trying to get off the block. Like, I'm like, yo, it's no eating time. It's no eating time. We're I'm about hungry. to find a collaboration. <laughs> and so uh, she says, uh, no, I know I'm hungry. So we're like, fine, gosh. So we walk outside, and she wanted to get these tacos. I didn't even have an appetite. Like, I was like, yo, I'm not eating nothing. Like, I, I'm trying. I should be inside. Like, and um, these three guys, they, you know, um, one of the guys, my man, is just like, he, he you know, turned into one of my best friends. He was like, yo, who made your jacket? Hmm. Because I was really dressed really unorthodox, you know, so I had this bomber on. It's L.A. I had, a, like, a, a, 
a Bulls jersey on with a bomber and some acne jeans and some jowns. Like, Cassidy and he wasn't even messing with Justin Saunders at the time. <laughs> they thought I was wearing New Balances. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, so, I was really, I was really dressed different, but I was like, yo, I'm about to get this jacket off. Yeah. I mean, it's like, who made your jacket? I'm like, I made it. He's like, oh, okay. I handed him the jacket, started checking it out. Then my man's, man's, my dog had on these Air Force Ones that said Black Lives Matter. Mm. My man, Nico. And I'll never forget because I remember protesting on the red line after Freddie Gray was killed. Mm. Like, really, like, because I was really taking a train really outside, I really felt when these situations were happening. Mm-hmm. So I remember making art and protesting on the train on the red line in Chicago, you know? And so in 2016, when I saw the, that strap that said Black Lives Matter, it really felt so progressive to me. I, had, I, I was like, I had never seen anything like it. Hmm. And so, you know, coming up when I was a kid, I used to paint on shoes. That was like kind of how I, I, you know, while we stayed in the birds, my mom I wasn't spoiled. Yeah, so you, you that know? was your way of making them new. Yeah, I would keep, that's how you preserve them. Mm-hmm. You know, I would get one pair of white Air Force Ones and a pair of black Air Force Absolutely. Ones. And you have to make that last. Right. And so painting shoes became a way I could keep it fresh. You can't tell me nothing. I painted this. You know what I'm saying? They clean. <laughs> Even if it's not, you don't paint. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking for? You know? So I really resorted back to my roots. I was like, bro, because I was still painting on stuff. Yeah. At the time, I was like, yo, can I paint on your shoes? And he said, yes. And my man took his shoe off on the steps of the Long, uh, the, the, the Long Beach Convention Center and let me paint on his shoes. Wow. And that moment, um, that moment inspired the Maker Studio. Hmm. Where people came people in. People come in and, and customize. Right. And right, 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 right. And yeah. Dude, so you know what's interesting about this Jew is that you didn't have anything in the back of your mind like, well, what are people going to think seeing me doing this? That never crossed your mind. I don't care what people think. Mm. I mean, I respect what people think, but I don't care. As it pertains to me, like, gee, like, everybody's living their own life. You don't get to live my life, too. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in 2016 was going to Complex Con as fans. Mm. Like, I was doing it to save my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what if if if, the, if y'all want to smoke in Newport and and and, and 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 drinking coffee on the nine, like <laughs> I don't really is it didn't really matter. So it was yeah. like I don't think they didn't even understand how serious and how life changing that like how bad I wanted it. Yeah, you know until of course they know now. Like my of homies course. know now. Yeah, but like like I was really like yo, I'm about to come back with something. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And, you know, as we've been following along, I've been following along, like, you've done, like, some crazy things since <laughs> since ComplexCon. You know, one of the things, I came to visit your your studio out in Forest Grove, right? You, this is the studio that you're you're in on the, this marijuana farm. Yes. And I, I remember, like, coming, it's like, how's it, like, 2,000 square feet? It may be, like, it's gigantic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice size. I'm running out of space, but I'm super grateful. I thank God every time I walk in there and I, when I leave, straight up. Goodness. And, it, you know, what's crazy is, like, when you say you're running out of space, it's crazy because, like, I remember being in there every, like, almost every inch is something you're actually working on. It's not just, like, it's not art that you're waiting to sell. It's a lot of stuff that's sold, and right. it's a lot of stuff you're like, this is, this is the new stuff. Like, I'm getting ready for my show. But one of the things I wanted to ask you about tonight, um, and it also pertains to kind of what inspires you when you create, was there were this series of uh, paintings that I've come to know as the Cairns. Yes. What was like? What was happening at the time? What like? What like inspired you to like create this series? So the Karen series that I painted um, was inspired by a neighbor. Um, prior to to the the, the new home, um, we we lived in a a, a town home mm-hmm. with a neighbor with a, a an attached garage. Right? Okay, so we're real close neighbors. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> a wall apart, <laughs> literally. So um, we'll use her name, Patsy. Um, <laughs> Patsy. 
I was I was sitting. So I, I'm a car enthusiast. I love my cars. I worked. I moved out here with a hundred dollars on a one way. I moved to Oregon because I like. The weather is very car friendly. There's a lot of things that are very curated in my life and intentional. Mm. And so with all that being said, I'm watching, I'm looking, marveling at my car, <laughs> drinking my coffee. Yeah. And I see my neighbor driving up and I'm like, she's not about to hit my car. And she hits my car. Now, I'm happy because I want, I'm like, I got to see this because so, I would have felt crazy. <laughs> If I walked out, I'm like, yo, how's what my, my car? Rent? Right, yeah. right. <laughs> so I rushed down and I, I stopped Patsy. I'm like, Patsy, you just hit my car. <laughs> and she says, oh, that's nothing but $700 worth of damage on that shitty car. <laughs> and I say, <laughs> Y'all felt that over there. <laughs> now, for, just so you can understand, she hit my 96 Impala. Mm. So, you know, uh, this, is a, this is a hood trophy. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you feel me? So I seen her hit my, my rear bumper. Hmm. And I go, Patsy, you hit my car. And she's like, oh, it's nothing. So she, she tries to mash off. So I, I let her go. Yeah. You're my neighbor. You got to come gotta back. You got to come back. <laughs> so I, I, I patiently wait. I light a cigar. I'm pissed. I light a cigar. I'm furious. Yeah. I'm sitting in my garage. I'm like, you're going to smell me when you pull up. Hmm. I'm here. <laughs> She pulls up, and I say, Patsy, look, I have good insurance. Yo, could we just, could you just let Square this? Square it up. I, like, yeah. my granddaddy's a vet. I have USAA. My deductible is $100. I'm can good. we just get this done? Can we just get it done? Right. She says, and there's a whole lot of in between, but like, ultimately, I pull my phone out because she starts to, she, she starts to become a bit more um, combative, and she, she ends up poking me in the chest, and she says, well, if you, you call the, your insurance, I'm gonna call the police and claim elder abuse. Right. So that's what she does. She calls the police. She actually calls the police. Yo, she calls the police. She called the police and, and said, There is a 20 something year old big black man that is abusing elders. Can you please come help? Wow. Now, I had the whole situation on tape. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's really what saved my life. Like, I really feel like if I didn't have the cognitive awareness to just record it, I'm like, I'm not dumb. Yeah. You're about to get recorded. Yeah. So after that, I was sitting in the house. I'm thinking like, yo, how do I come, like, get a get back? Like, like, like how do I make her feel this? Hmm. I don't want to go to jail. Yeah. You're smarter than that. (laughs) Right? So I pray. I say, God, just give me an idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm driving to work to studio one day, and I'm looking through my reference books, and I stumble on Roy Lichtenstein paintings and some Warhol paintings, and I say, there it is, hmm. the Karen series. So I painted one, and I send it. I have a, I have a few friends. Like I said, my friends. Like I said, my friends. My friends like it. I know it's good. You know you're good. I know it's good. <laughs> so I sent this to my man. He said, incredible. <laughs> I was like, okay, bet. So I went and I painted three more that day. And once I had the four, like, because I paint for myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm really, because I, I, I have a degree in this. I went to school for this. You have to fall in love with painting. This is not about nobody else. This is far before it became popular to mm-hmm. be a painter or like convenient to take on art. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I, before I was arguing or like trying to convince people why I was a great artist, it's like I had to convince my grandparents that. <laughs> my wow. mom that. You wow. know what I'm saying? It has to start in your own house. Yeah. It has to. That's your, those are your first critiques. Yeah. You know, if you don't get past that, that's the learning curve. Absolutely. 
Right. And so you, this series ends up like, right, you get all, you know, kind of this validation from your circle, right? You're not looking for outside validation. And one of the things that I saw was that this ended up, series ended up being on the cover of New York Magazine, New York yeah. Mag. Yeah, the Karen series ended up on a new, cover of New York Mag. One day I was driving to work and I don't answer numbers that I don't recognize. So I had this message and it's like, hi, this is so-and-so from the New York Mag. We really <laughs> like your Karen series. And I, I was like, wow, God, you are good. Did you think it was a real call? I don't have fake calls. Mm. Mm. I, knew it was, I, I knew it was a real call. I called it right back. Because I'd already done New York Mag, the cover before. Yeah. Um, with the I Voted campaign. Right. Right. And so I don't think it was directly attached. I think it was like, but, you know, if you do good work, you the, yeah, the you benefit of around. that, you get more good work. Of course. You know, or you get more work. So um, she reached out. I think it was because I posted on Instagram. People really, Instagram is your business card. Hmm. Like, I weed a lot of people out. Like, if you if you don't know the rule of thirds, then I probably can't hire you. <laughs> you Google the rule of thirds. <laughs> you know? Facts. Do you feel like a lot of your your stories are inspired by a lot of things that are happening from a social injustice standpoint? I I really paint about stuff that I experience mm -hmm. and I think I paint about stories that need to be told. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up I went to I I went to church on the south side um at Trinity United Church of Christ. So you know, the, you get people gotta understand. Like, like I, I don't, I didn't go to college and get my masters. Like, I got my masters in church. Whew. You know, I learned from some really good pastors, some really good doctors. Like, you think about the compound interest of Sundays and two hours on, on years on years on years. You know, that's a lot of teaching. And so, a right. lot of the stuff, because I see in pictures. You know, a lot of things like Pastor Wright will be preaching, or I'll be in the back eating breakfast with him and Pastor Moss, and and I learned this stuff. I remember sitting across from Michael Eric Dyson and Father Flager as a young kid and just being like so taken aback of their way of speaking mm. and how they would tell me things that connected with life and the Bible. And so a lot of stuff, like when I paint about, I just feel like I have to paint about these things. It's not yeah. really, it's like a glass of scotch. Like it's not, my art is not for everybody. Mm. Scotch is not for everybody. Everybody doesn't wear Rolex. You know, there, there are more expensive timepieces. There are some timepieces that are a little bit more affordable, right? Yeah. But a Rolex owner hmm. understands another Rolex owner. Hmm. That's my art. My art is, are Rolexes. You know, there are glasses of scotch. You know? That is a whole bar. <laughs> Jew, we can sit here and talk for hours, and, and, I, and I would love to, because we're going to have to do a, a part two to this um, for, the, for the sake of time. Did I tonight. earn a part two? <laughs> Did you earn a Did part two? Did I earn two? a part two? <laughs> the audience been over here. I, I, I want the private one in the van, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We, I mean, we, yeah, we could do that. You might, it might, you know. My dog. <laughs> um, but, you know, the one thing I wanted to kind of ask you is that as we, we leave this part of the conversation is, um, you know, as you think about kind of where you want to go in your career, what's the kind of the story that, that you want to tell? Have you, have you thought about that? What does that look like? Absolutely. Um, I have like a, a 10 to 20, 30 year plan. Like my long term plan is to, to, to be a teacher. Like, I think a lot of the teachers that I had in college, especially, uh, were, were not teaching from a successful artist standpoint, mm -hmm. right? So my best friend is, a, is an accountant, right? Mm -hmm. When he was in school, when we were all at school together, his professor was the best in finance. <laughs> in my experience, and this is, might not go for all colleges at the art level, but what I found is, and I talked to other art students, they'd be like, yeah, well, if he was a successful artist, then why he be teaching? Hmm. And that's a good point. That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like, oh, I'm a, I want to be able to go back at 50, 60 and be able to teach half the year because those are because I want to be appreciated. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I want people to be like, yo, I got to get in his class, right? <laughs> but I want to teach half the year and right. teach from a standpoint of like, you can do this. You can really use your art and whatever your creative abilities and hmm. to make and, and make it tangible, make money. Yo, I love it, dude. Yes, well, we definitely going to look out for you to do that, brother. We Thank appreciate you. you spending time with us on the stage. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you.